Okay, so uh, hello everyone. Welcome to uh, day two of this uh, introduction to quantitative time diary analysis um, short course or workshop uh, jointly co-organized by uh, the UK Data Service and uh, the Center for Time Use Research. So UKDS is the training branch and it's based at the University of Manchester and CTUR is based at uh, University College London. My name is Pierre Walteri. I am a um, research uh, associate at UKDS and also a um, research fellow at uh, CTUR. So I am going to um, hopefully uh, take you through some more exciting um, demonstrations of things that we can do with time diary uh, research, uh, time diary data, sorry. <laughs> so quick reminder, last week we covered three main uh, topics. So the first one uh, was, uh, I tried to sketch uh, the origins and milestones of time diary research, or at least some of it. Um, and then uh, I presented and I spent some time uh, showing how uh, time diary uh, data uh, and most diary surveys uh, are structured, what is the data structure and survey design. And then uh, the last thing we do is uh, we started uh, putting our hands to work uh, with uh, our uh, estimation of uh, duration of activities and uh, probability of engaging in activities uh, using the MTOS, so the multinational time use um, study. Okay, so now what are we going to do today? Today, uh, I, apart from this recap, uh, I wanted also to maybe uh, start with a second uh, exercise similar to what we did last week, uh, but with another type of uh, data looking uh, at travel this time. Then uh, we will uh, look at a number of uh, important issues, uh, I mean, for any uh, <laughs> survey research, but in particular for time diary research, which is about data quality. So what can we uh, how can we diagnose the, that we are working with good quality data? And if there are issues, how can we deal with them? And also uh, inference and weighting. And then uh, we'll spend a significant amount of time looking at tempograms, uh, which is a way of uh, visualizing uh, activities throughout the days. Um, and then further topics uh, will be about uh, sketching how to uh, use multivariate modeling techniques that some of you may already know, such as regression with uh, time diary data. I will just cover this in brief uh, due to time limitations. And I would also, uh, and the last part of uh, today's will be spent maybe uh, discussing and uh, uh, exchanging about um, uh, the opportunities of research with time diary database, maybe on your own ideas and interest. Okay, so uh, I'm stop sharing just for a second, uh, and I wanted to ask you. Uh, there are yes Q and A. Feel free to, as reminded kindly by Emma, uh, to ask questions during the presentations in the Q and A box, and I will try to catch them um, as uh, as you put them. But uh, before I, I I start and we we uh, delve into uh, this practical, I wanted to ask uh, if anyone had questions or comments based on. Uh, uh, last week's uh, workshop. So feel free to uh, switch on your camera and uh, unmute yourself and ask questions. We are not that many today anyway. So uh, I think everyone, we can just manage this flexibly. Okay, now I am going to share uh, in the chat. Yes, I'm going to, sh to share in the chat the link to uh, the Dropbox folder. 
I will start uh, with the second example. Uh, can So just in case it's not clear enough, if you have not downloaded the data yet, uh, please download it from the link I've shared before. Similarly, uh, I'm going to sh to go through and um, to demonstrate some coding. So this is from the uh, uh, as in the, the demonstration from the, the coding is contained in the uh, workbook seventeen HTML file, which is also in the Dropbox folder. Um, and uh, if you open it with any browser, uh, once you have downloaded it, you'll be able to follow uh, what I am going to uh, to demonstrate now. Uh, feel free to uh, shout for help if you have uh, any problem uh, while doing that. Okay, I'll share the screen again. So I thought it would be interesting to uh, basically try to do the, uh, so, maybe the same type of uh, computation as we did last week, but this time looking at another type of uh, of data, uh, and which is and also maybe not just looking at uh, the main uh, activity variables, but also some uh, background uh, diary variables as you're going to see. So a reminder, how does it work? So I am assuming, or if you want to, uh, you can work alongside uh, this demonstration by having uh, R Studio open uh, and then copy and paste uh, the way I'm doing it here, the syntax from uh, the HTML uh, workbook into your own um, R Studio. And then you will see uh, you will see it working for yourself on your computer. Obviously, you will need, as we have done before, to change uh, the working directory here that you are uh, using on your computer. Okay, so we start as we did last week, first by uh, loading the necessary uh, R packages, so D player for data manipulation alongside tidy R ggplot2 for nice plots, haven for uh, importing SPSS uh, and Stata uh, dataset. And there will be a couple more uh, packages that we'll need uh, and load further down uh, the line. Okay, so uh, once we set uh, the, we have set the working directory here, uh, we can, just like we did last week, uh, load respectively the episode file, uh, which uh, I chose to store in an object called app. Uh, and also uh, I removed a couple of variables that we are not going to need uh, to keep the data frame as uh, small and tidy as possible. And then the day level uh, data uh, that uh, is contained in a separate data set. So mtos teach int the DTA. So that with, with these two uh, data frames in uh, memory, we uh, have all the data we need for today. Uh, as last week, uh, we can also create the study variables. You could argue that I could merge everything and work with one data set, which is possible, but I prefer to keep things separate. So, which as a consequence means that I need to create the study variable in both data sets, uh, as I will use it later to merge some of the data. Okay, as I was uh, suggesting, uh, we are going to work with uh, modes of travel. Uh, which is a, a, an interesting features of time diary research, uh, especially given uh, the growing interest, uh, the current interest about uh, sustainability, uh, because we can follow uh, the way people uh, travel uh, for different reasons. And we also have um, records of uh, the mode of travels, so the, the, the way uh, they choose to uh, travel uh, when they do. Uh, 
uh, whether it's by car, or by uh, walking, or by public transport, for example. <clears throat> so in DMT US, and I'm going to show this quickly. Uh, in DMT US, uh, the travel is coded this way. Uh, if you look at the categories here, ranging from main 62 to main 68. Um, so this, this is a, a code which is presented as if these were separate variables in a wide data set, but in the long format MTUS that we are working with, these are simply code. So uh, if ma the main variable uh, is coded 62, it refers to this one, 63 to this one, and so on and so forth. So you can see we have, uh, um uh, reasons of travel uh, whether it is uh, from uh, uh travel for work education related uh child care related etc cetera, etc cetera. Uh, and there's uh, um uh, i am well i was looking for a description of the modes of travel uh i will show it later because it's not in this document i think um yes i will uh show that one a little bit later but they usually uh they include uh travel by car travel by uh other means uh this is the m uh variable uh in uh mtos actually if i do a variable search maybe i could so, so this is the these are the mode of travel that are, are recorded in uh, MTOS. So by car, truck, or anything that's basically uh, an individual means of transport that's burning petrol, uh, public transport, walking, cycling, or another. Uh, uh, mode of travel requiring some physical activity and then uh, unspecified travel. So with, with that knowledge in mind, we can uh, decide to, uh, or we are able indeed to record the, the time people spend traveling uh, per day. Uh, on And here I chose to keep things simple by using a, a dichotomic variable. So by car or assimilated versus uh, any other uh, means of transport, so including public transport or active travel. So I'm recording in, uh, I am first flagging uh, the uh, car-related transport travel as uh, TRC.T in the dataset and other means of travel TRO.T. So it's just uh, uh, flagging uh, the travel episode, first part of the condition, six, uh, main uh, greater or equal than 62 and smaller or equal than 68 in both cases, alongside MTRAV is equal to one for cars and uh, MTRAV is greater than one and smaller or equal to five uh, for other means of transport as we have seen in the code book. And I'm just uh, uh, using the basic or the base R if else uh, condition, which is the more straightforward way of uh, uh, specifying uh, a condition recording in R. <clears throat> so, and as we've done last week, so if uh, the condition is met, then the variable records the duration of the episode and is zero if it doesn't meet the condition for selection. So once we have done that, we can now uh, compute uh, the daily total for each one of these two uh, type of travel. So I'm calling these two variables trc.d and trc.d, uh, tro.d, which simply records the sum of the two respectively 
the two variables uh, we have just created. And uh, you will notice if you're not familiar with R that I'm using a grouped uh, command here, because obviously the sum is computed uh, for uh, each diary within persons, within day, within uh, uh, persons. Okay, so now I have this um, TRC D and TRO D variables, and I want to have a look at them. So, uh, of course, you can ask for descriptive statistics, but it's also nice, for example, to uh, look at the histogram. So this is what we do, and in R, it's really simple to get a histogram of a variable. You just need to type hist uh, followed by the name of the variable you want to have a histogram for. You will notice here that I am, uh, and that's uh, maybe a link with what the conversation I had with uh, one of you earlier. Uh, since we have tier O C tier O uh, sorry tier C D and tier O D our uh, daily uh, totals uh, span traveling uh, variables are aggregate uh, variables then we only need uh, one row per day and this is how I select one row per day uh, epnum being the number of the episode number in the episode data set. Uh, and uh, also, given that there's a lot of uh, participants, uh, and we know that already, uh, that do not uh, travel on a given day, I wanted to have a look just at the uh, distribution of uh, duration of travel for people who travel. So this is why I specify also that the histogram will only apply to people who uh, have traveled on the day. And uh, yes, freq is equal to f is just a way of asking for uh, probabilities rather than uh, number of observations. Uh, here, I don't spend time uh, asking R to uh, display a nice title for the histogram because we're just interested in the data, but that's just a a brief uh, overview of the distribution of uh, this variable. And you can see as well that uh, this variable uh, as well, so the first one being uh, duration of, uh, daily duration of travel involving cars or assimilated, and the other one I remind you, uh, daily duration of travel with other means of transport. Uh, the vast majority, uh, and it's maybe something you've heard before, the vast majority of such journeys are really short journeys. Uh, you can see here they are uh, they seem to involve duration uh, durations of uh, less than uh, fifty uh, minutes per day. <clears throat> so that's uh, the first overview of. Uh, our travel duration by mode of transport. Of course, we usually want to go a little bit further. And uh, one of the things we may want to look at is uh, summary statistics such as, or point estimates such as uh, the mean uh, duration. So I can very easily do that uh, now that I have computed uh, my uh, daily total. So I can simply ask, R to compute uh, the mean for me. And uh, that's what I get here. Uh, and again, in order to make sure that my results are not based by the different numbers of episodes between people, between diaries, um, I only compute uh, this mean for the, uh, while keeping one line or one record per uh, day. <clears throat> and so I end up with an uh, estimate of uh, the car journey here, uh, which is about 40 minutes on average uh, against 22 minutes 
on average, uh, for travel by uh, other uh, means of transport. Uh, I'm just moving a bit the camera here. So are there any, there's a problem here. Um, yes, if it's, uh, uh, sorry, I didn't see your question earlier. So if it's telling you that it cannot find a, a study, it means that you probably uh, did not run the code uh, that created the study variable. And I'm going to, it's at the top of the, the exercise here. So um, you need to make sure that you have run these two lines, which create the study variable uh, in your data set. And the way I, I can read the your error message is uh, because the, it cannot find the study variable. Okay, so we now have uh this uh, variables okay um of course now uh that we have these means the next stage is to uh see if we can find uh interesting comparisons uh, according to uh research uh, questions we may be interested in, such as, for example, are there country differences in uh, the amount of time uh, people spend traveling uh, using different modes of travel? And of course, you are probably not going to be surprised to be uh, to discover that it is indeed the case. And with the data that we have, it is uh, really easy to uh, compute uh, such uh, differences um, using a syntax that is uh, very uh, similar to the one we've used uh, here. So uh, I'm again starting from uh, the episode file. Um, again, selecting only one uh, line per day, one record per day. And then I'm asking to uh, group uh, by study, uh, as a uh, participant tried to do earlier. Um, study, don't, which is basically a country year, a combination of country year. And to compute <clears throat> uh, the respectively the mean and the median uh, of each uh, duration. Uh, why do we want the mean and the median? Because as uh, you may know, if you're a little bit familiar with statistical analysis, means uh, tend to be uh, sensitive to, and uh, so sometimes oversensitive to extreme values. So having a couple of people in your sample who have a uh, very long travel uh, duration on a given day may uh, skew your results a little bit too much, whereas the median, which uh, is uh, less sensitive to extreme value, gives a, a better overview of uh, what's going on in the data. Uh, and I'm just going to come to this in a, in a second. So the, the table here shows uh, what we get. And we get indeed uh, interesting uh, results. So focusing on the uh, on the means here, we can see that as you may have expected, uh, the US is uh, the country with the longest uh, duration of uh, traveling uh, by car or similar. Uh, and the country which has the least uh, amount of time spent uh, traveling by other means than car. Uh, Spain is the country with the lowest uh, time spent on cars. Uh, and uh, the Netherlands, uh, the country with the largest amount of time spent on other uh, transport, modes of transport and car. And of course, you may have heard uh, about the, the amount of people cycling in the Netherlands. Now, uh, I think it's important here to uh, go back to a topic we covered last week, which is 
uh, when we look at uh, time diary data, we always have to make a decision as to whether we look at uh, the full sample, which we have done here, or if we want to only look at participants. So the median here uh, with, the, with the amount of, re of uh, zeros shows that uh, there are lots of people who have uh, not traveled on the diary days, especially uh, here, uh, travel by other means and card. And card. Uh, we could decide uh, that, because that's our research interest, uh, that we only want to look at uh, the uh, people who did travel on the day. But if it were the case, then, uh, of course, each uh, column here would uh, be computed uh, with different samples for each uh, day. So we would not really com uh, be comparing the same people. Uh, that would be the, the cost of uh, such an approach. But on the other hand, instead uh, of having probably uh, atypically small estimates of uh, travel duration, we would have uh, in the same way we did last week with uh, the duration of time spent on paid work, uh, we would have values that are probably more closer to what most people uh, actually spend on, on travel. Okay, any questions about this? Okay, so um, in the same way as uh, we compute uh, duration, we can also, of course, compute uh, probabilities. So <clears throat> once we have duration, uh, it's uh, always easy to compute probabilities as uh, defined as having a duration greater than uh, zero. Um, so this is what uh, I do here in the next code chunk. So <clears throat> again, starting from uh, the episode uh, five, and again, keeping only uh, one record per day, I'm grouping uh, the data by uh, study, and then I'm asking to uh, I'm asking R to compute. It's a little bit of a trick. Uh, the mean of uh, this uh, probability, and it happens that. Uh, R can compute that all in one go, which uh, relieves me from the from having to compute separate probability uh, variables and then uh, aggregate them. There are different ways of doing this. You could also ask for a cross tab, for example, but uh, I'm, I am uh, doing it this way uh, today. Okay, so, and similarly as uh, before, uh, we have a nice table uh, that uh, allows us to uh, compare probability of using any of the modes of transport uh, on diary day. And again, uh, you won't be surprised to see that uh, the US is uh, the country in the sample with the largest probability uh, uh, of having uh, people reporting uh, travel by cars on, a, on any day, a 0.6 probability. Uh, and that compares to a country uh, like Spain, where the probability is significantly smaller at 0.42 um, per day. Uh, and we, if we look at uh, the, the other means of, uh, of transport, uh, similarly, you know, in the US, you're very unlikely to be traveling by anything else than a car or by other means of transport, put it that way. And in uh, the other countries, uh, especially again, uh, Spain, uh, you are uh, much more likely. Of course, we are not talking here about just uh, you using other modes of transport, uh, organized transport. It's also about uh, walking. 
of course, here this there are lots to to this uh, than just uh, um, uh, hypotheses that I can make on the fly, and this is this is data aggregated uh, for really sometimes large countries. So of course, uh, significant analysis needs to go. Uh, behind uh, looking at, at such data but still it's uh, it's interesting to um compare uh, differences uh, at that uh, level now uh before uh, moving on to another topic uh we can and i, I think that uh, is a good way of uh, covering again uh, the um, issue of merging data we can uh, look at uh, person level or other person level information uh, across according to which we can uh, draw uh, or, or comparisons. Uh, and I thought um, it would be interesting to look at gender differences uh, in um, the, this uh, amount or probability of uh, traveling uh, by mode of transport. So in order to do that, I need to uh, put together, merge together the duration uh, variables uh, I have created with individual level information. There are different ways of doing this. Uh, you can either create a new data set. Yes, uh, there's a question. Uh, okay, so going back to this, so these are our probabilities. So here, I, as I was saying, you can. Uh, there are different ways of merging data. So you can, as I've done it here, add to the person to the day level. Sorry, uh, data that I had before opened separately. Uh, you can add the uh, uh, aggregate time estimates computed in the episode data set. You can. One could also decide to. Put everything into a new data frame. Um, or yes, there are different ways of, of doing it. Actually, this is what I did here. I, I didn't add it to the day level data. I created a new data set uh, rather than adding it to the existing one. That's the nice thing about how you can have as many uh, data frame as your computer's memory allows for it. Anyway, so. I am indeed uh, merging D and uh, my computed uh, durations here. And you will see that I'm only selecting uh, from the episode data set the stuff that I really need. So the identification variable, uh, study as computed previously, household identification, person identification, diary identification, and then the two uh, daily totals. Uh, that I computed. And the first four variables are only going to be used for the purpose of matching with the day level data. And uh, to keep things simple here, I am only keeping the, uh, the observation for which there's a match. So if for some reason there's some missing data along the way, then uh, I am asking uh, are to drop these, which is something you need to think about, uh, and you need to think if it's what serves your research uh, purpose uh, when you do it with your own analysis. So as uh, we did last week, I create a, a more a clearer gender uh, variables here, and then once this is done, I can. Uh, this time using two grouping variables study as before and gender uh, produced uh, the mean uh, duration of travel by mode of transport by gender and uh, just um, out of curiosity also i created a ratio variable uh, which uh, measure measure the ratio of uh, travel uh, by other means uh, divided by the uh, duration of travel by car. So this ratio would be greater to one 
uh, as soon as um, travel by or I mean by cars is greater only for or equal uh, in duration than travel by car. Okay, so the table here shows the results. And uh, as before, we have uh, interesting contrast. Does any one of you would like to comment instead of me doing all the talking? What can you see from this table? Okay. Um, so one of the things we can see in the table is um, uh, something that's been documented in the gender uh, uh, or the literature that had been looking at gender differences in paid work um, or gender in general, uh, especially in Western countries, and which is that uh, women uh, tend to spend less time than men uh, to uh, travel uh, because more 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 often than men women have a uh, family responsibility look after children and as a result uh, uh, either uh, do not have paid work or if they do have part-time work especially in countries like the UK and even if they have full-time or uh, paid work tend to uh, look for jobs that are nearer to home so that uh, they can still uh come back easy to uh look after children who are going to school if need be so and that is reflected uh or, or that is one of the reason uh, why researchers uh, uh or how researchers explain the shorter uh duration of time commuting but not just commuting uh, spent by women so <clears throat> That's one of the, the interesting things we can uh, see in these results. Um, I didn't look at uh, uh, male to female ratio within country, which would be something that could be interesting to look at. So you could do for, for yourself to see if uh, uh, the level of gender differences are broadly similar uh, between countries or if countries uh, are more unequal in terms of uh, the duration men and women of men and women's uh, traveling time. Um, the last column about the ratio uh, confirms maybe things what we've seen before. Uh, we've seen before. So, the US is the country with the uh, lowest ratio, which means that uh, the mean uh, time spent traveling by car uh, relative to other means is uh, by far the largest and hence the smaller ratio. Um, that there are almost no countries where uh, people uh, or, or where sorry the, the duration of car travel uh, is smaller than uh, non-car travel. Uh, the, there's only one exception, uh, and this is Spain, women in Spain, uh, who seem to, uh, or journeys by, uh, uh, sorry, the, the ratio of uh, car versus non-car uh, journey in Spain tends to be uh, uh, occurring mostly for uh, or to be largest uh, for uh, journeys that are carried out by female. Um, yes, and with the, the Nathans, not too far. The Nathans are very close to one, uh, but not quite. So this is just really an illustration of how uh, time use data can be uh, utilized to uh, document maybe um, interesting research question having to do with uh, uh, <clears throat> travel sustainability and indeed uh, gender differences in uh, behavior uh, altogether. So this, I am... this, is, this is quite also interesting because we, this um, 
car timings. You can't really tell if it's people in their cars traveling long distances or if they're in their cars stuck in traffic, or can you? Hmm. Just, uh, just curious, because it might actually be that even though the other modes of transport are used less, it could be, I don't believe it, because with public transport, you still have to wait. But it could be that's actually a more efficient way of traveling because you have the, your bus lanes or your undergrounds or, or something okay. else, but probably uh, not, maybe not. Okay, so I am... Um... Uh, I think that there, there are certainly many ways or several ways in which uh, this uh, rough analysis can be uh, refined a little bit. <clears throat> so uh, if uh, I, I suppose you one could look at, uh, so I, I don't think it's possible to directly uh, look at, so it's no, I'm putting it in a different way. So first of all, if you look at commute versus non-commute, that could be a first way of looking at usual travel versus maybe less usual travel. And assuming, okay, not all unusual travel are long travel, but uh, travel for leisure that's not for shopping may be uh, a way of trying to capture longer travels and then of course uh yes there is also a way of looking at the proportion of long travel so if you look at someone's tradition you can uh, long travel that is done by uh, by car rather than other means of transport so that there are ways of playing a little bit with the data but it is true that formally speaking you you can't uh uh determine uh, whether uh, people are st stuck in traffic. Although, actually, uh, yes, what we, you can look at uh, is the time of the travel. So, and again, it's not a perfect instrument, but say if a person is having a long travel journey uh, or reports a long uh, travel episode at uh, between five and six uh, in the afternoon, <clears throat> then it's more reasonable to infer that this could, and that is a work commute, it may be more reasonable to, to assume that there has been, or there could have been some uh, um, uh, congestions involved. But of course, it's, uh, it's speculation a little bit still. I am starting again with this homage to Salvador Dali and the way that time escapes, always escapes a little bit our attempt at measuring it. <clears throat> uh, yes, I need to cover now a number of topics that have to do with the way uh, we do statistical inference with um, time diary data given the, the specific nature of time diary data. Okay, so a recap. Some of you may have, or maybe all of you may have uh, come across this at some point in your career uh, or the other, but I'm just uh, reminding it here to make sure that we are all on the same wavelength. So uh, when we use uh, when we do data analysis with uh, survey data, it is uh, very often because we would like to find out uh, about uh, a population, uh, more specifically the population from which uh, the sample we're working with is drawn. Uh, without going into uh, all the statistical theory that underpins this uh the the, the main or one of the main reasons samples uh, or certain samples allow us to uh, infer things about population is that they were conducted at random uh and over uh large enough and they are made of uh, a large enough number of uh individuals or uh, units. So, however, we also know that most samples, uh, or if not all samples, have some degree of bias. 
the bias comes from the fact that not everyone um, is equally likely to be part of the sample, as in to have been sampled. Uh, there are groups that are less likely than others to, to be selected for sampling. And even uh, if uh, there were that were not an issue, uh, we also know that some people, some type of people, uh, for example, uh, younger men, uh, are less likely to take part to uh, uh, surveys, uh, either because they are not interested or because uh, they have a lifestyle that makes it more difficult than uh, other people to actually uh, contact them. Um, contrast that with all the people who uh, uh, have a more regular uh, lifestyle, for example. And of course, this is just an example among uh, other of groups that are less likely to, to be sampled. Okay, so, and there are all sorts of uh, techniques that is that are used by uh, statisticians or survey designers to try and alleviate these issues, stratifications, uh, disproportionate sampling, clustering are some of these tools. So when one uh, uh, computes estimates from samples, one has to take account of this. And even if it's often not shown because teach for teaching purposes, uh, we want to go to uh, the essential and not uh, go into all the detail of estimation. Uh, actually, when working with survey data, at the very least, all estimates should use weights. Uh, what are weights? Weights are variables uh, that allow to compensate for the fact that some people in the sample were less likely of, of or people of certain groups in the sample were less likely to have been selected. And uh, whereas others are belong to groups that were more likely to be selected. So weights, in a way, gives more importance, allows estimation to give more importance to people who we know are underrepresented and less importance to, do, uh, to those who we know are um, overrepresented. Uh, so, but that's only one part of it, uh, because way it's allowed to compute uh, more representative point estimates of single values uh, of the characteristics one is interested in, such as a mean, for example. But uh, we also want uh, to know about the uncertainty, the precision of our estimates. And uh, this is why uh, the best uh, estimation technique we can use, uh, try to uh, also take into account not only of the weights, but also of uh, survey design characteristics. Uh, but I'm not going to go into the details of this is just a reminder. And of course, uh, doing this is not always possible. So more, in most cases, people will, will just use weights uh, when computing uh, estimates. Okay. But so these were, this was only for, this was in general for social surveys. Now, uh, what's happening when we are uh, trying to do so, to conduct some uh, inference with um, time use surveys? So, and this is where I am going back to the questions that was asked by um, uh, Elena, I think, I hope I'm not, uh, getting the name wrong, Eleni, sorry. Um, so first of all, we need to think about uh, the nature of our population. So in a typical social survey, the population of reference tends to be uh, either people or households. Here, what we are actually sampling uh, is days of people. Um, and this is so because we, uh, in most uh, surveys, uh, we collect several uh, days uh, per people. 
uh, even in the case of one uh, day per person, it's still uh, we're still collecting a sample of, of days. Okay, so therefore we are working with a population of days. Now there are immediately a number of issues that potentially arise from that. So first one is uh, when was the when were the days collected? So in the case of uh, high quality time use survey such as the UK it was 2014-15, the, the survey was conducted during a full calendar year uh, between 2014 and 15. So which means that uh, in theory, these days that were collected uh, are representative of the days of British people or British people uh, as defined uh, age eight and uh, greater, because this was the the, the way the population re of reference for that survey was designed. Uh, so the days of um, British people uh, during that period, during that year, and even more specifically, uh, you given that two such days were collected. So uh, these were representative of, on the one hand, uh, weekdays and weekends. Now, uh, that's uh, interesting in theory, but uh, there are a number of caveats. So one caveat is the fact that, uh, I haven't put it in the slides, but uh, uh, not all surveys uh, have enough uh, means or have enough funding to uh, conduct a study for a period of a full year. So there are many cases where the time use survey has only been conducted in uh, over a single month, for example, and or alternatively where only one day per person has been collected. So all of this uh, has an impact on what claims can be made about uh, the representativeness uh, of uh, the data. So if indeed uh, your time use data has been collected, your population of reference uh, in November, so it means in theory the inference you can make are only valid for uh, what happens in November. Uh, so there are these sort of caveats that need always to be taken in, on board when uh, conducting uh, analysis with time diary data. And also, more, it's even more so uh, when we are working with uh, <clears throat> a comparative database such as the MTOS, which is made of a very large number of uh, sometimes very different uh, studies. Um, with uh, different designs. So it's important uh, not to uh, become too quickly enthusiastic, <laughs> or uh, it's important to curb our enthusiasm if we find interesting reason with MTOS, just to make sure that uh, we are not uh, comparing Apple with, with pairs, depending on the survey design. However, it remains that um, it is if the right conditions are met and if we are working with uh, data uh, that is good enough, we can still make claim about uh, having results that are representative of uh, the way people uh, spend their time, as in the days that were spent um, on some activities uh, in a, for a certain population for a certain uh, or during a certain period of time or uh, uh, as in uh, historical time. Okay, uh, so that's for the, the, the principle. But in practice, in the same way as uh, one has non-response for uh, traditional socio-demographic characteristics, we also know that uh, people do not actually uh, necessarily answer or fill in their time diary on the day there is allocated. <laughs> if everyone was doing it, 
uh, and and therefore, if everyone was filling in their diary on the randomly allocated day by the study, then you would or one would uh, reasonably uh, what could expect that to have a relatively balanced uh, distribution of, of days. Uh, weeks or months in the case of a, of a year-long uh, survey. But that's not the case, because for all sorts of reasons, uh, people uh, do not necessarily uh, fill in uh, their time diary on the, on the allocated day. And it may also, and uh, other reasons may also play, uh, play a role. But <clears throat> since uh, still with a view of being able to make inference about a uh, given uh, time period in a, in a way that is robust, we want to have estimates that give equal weights to um, the, the time period, to, to every day uh, of weeks and weeks of the, the period of reference. So this is why we are, or um time use surveys designers uh, compute uh, an extra layer of weights um that are diary weights so we have seen uh, that in social survey weights are designed as a way of commenting for non response at the individual level uh, or unequal probability of selection but uh, here we have uh, a diary level uh, weight that uh, takes into account the fact that we want uh, ideally to uh, uh, be able to uh, equalize uh, the distribution of days and if possible months in our data. Um, and with, uh, with that in mind, uh, and I, I'm, I will show uh, in a moment uh, how it translates, uh, once these weights are applied alongside uh, the person level weights that I've mentioned about, then uh, one is able to make more robust inferences about the time um, uh, the duration or probability of uh, activities uh, for a given uh, population. So, as I, yes, uh, this last point I have uh, already said here. So the, the inference we make with time diary data are limited to uh, the, the field, the duration of the, the time of the year during which field work has taken place. Um, the main uh, uh, the, the main uh, issue with time diary data, I would say the, one of the main limitation um, is not so much, uh, in my view, uh, the fact that uh, yes, there can be a limitation in the time of the year, the period of during the year during which uh, or, or to which we can infer, but it has more to do with the fact that uh, within person uh, variation is limited. So as you can imagine, it would be very costly to uh, ask people to fill in a time diary for. Uh, more than a couple of days. This is why most surveys settle for two days per week. Some uh, go for go as far as, uh, and this is the case of our Dutch sample here in the empty West data, uh, for seven days uh, per respondent. But um, it's hardly ever go any further than that. So which means that uh, when we want to, uh, or if we are interested in studying uh, variation within persons of um, time spent on activities or probability of activities, then things can become a little bit uh, trickier. So with the data in time diary data, you can, it is possible to compute estimates, for example, of uh, the amount of time people spend on physical activity uh, at the aggregate level, at the population level, with the caveat that I have lighted. But if one is interested in studying uh, what makes uh, someone uh, engage uh, in uh, physical activity on a certain day rather than another, then that's uh, 
usually very tricky to conduct with a standard time use data. You can, of course, if you have funding, collect your own data in which you, you collect more days, uh, possibly on a smaller sample, uh, but same time diary data would limit your ability to, to do these types of things. Okay, uh, any questions in relation to, to this? Okay, so uh, another topic also that we need to cover quickly um, before going back to R. Um, it's the issue of, uh, or another issue um, related to uh, data quality. Okay, so um, given the complexity, it's not uncommon to find uh, problems or uh, related to the quality of time diaries. Of course, it, it varies very much uh, on uh, from one study to the other. Certain studies have a very good uh, standard of uh, completion and checking their data, others less so. So it's sometimes uh, uh, up to you as a researcher to look at or to check that a number of things are uh, as they should. Um, so I, I'm just going through here a number of common uh, parameters, uh, to put it that way, uh, through which quality has been looked at uh, in time diary data, in particular with the MTOS. So uh, in the MTOS, uh, it's in, in, uh, it has been decided that uh, the uh, in order to be labeled as good quality episodes, um, diaries or being sorry, uh, good quality diaries, uh, diaries needed to uh, have at least uh, seven episodes. So people who for some reason did not fill in. Uh, at least seven episodes in their diaries uh, are considered as uh, bad diarists. And uh, there's a, a flag in the data that allows uh, these uh, respondents, or at least their diary, to be selected out uh, because it's possible that, or it's likely that uh, uh, they didn't record properly uh, what they were doing uh, during uh, their day. Uh, so this decision, uh, another component of uh, what makes or, or what makes bad diaries according to the MTOS definition is uh, the extent to which, in addition to having uh, not many episodes, uh, some key activities are missing. Of course, it happens to everyone to skip meals or even to have a sleepless night, but. Uh, if this comes together with a small number of episodes, then, and, and maybe other uh, indications that are not mentioned here, then uh, it, it may be a sign that uh, the person who filled in the time diary did not do it seriously, and uh, it's best not to include that time diary in the analysis. So, to put it in the context, and I think it's something I've mentioned before, uh, 15 uh, episodes per day is uh, the, the, av the average uh, that we observe uh, people feeling. So uh, if you, and of course with people sometimes feeling, feeling in many more than 15 episodes per day. So if you have a uh, uh, number of episodes that drops, they begin to drop below, uh, 10, this, this is a sign where uh, you need to question maybe the, the quality of your data. Okay, uh, another, uh, and I'm just mentioning it, this one here, we won't have the time to, to demonstrate it, is uh, the case of incoherence in the data. You can have enough episodes, you can have uh, uh, the key episode being present, but it may be also that the, the data uh, does not uh, add up uh, properly. It may, there may be a hole. By hole, we mean 
when uh, the the all the ending time and uh, of episode do not coincide with the beginning time of the next episode, for example, or when the time at which the uh, the episode the uh, diary uh, begins is not uh, properly uh, mentioned, but all of this of there's too many episodes uh which can also happen but this usually involve looking uh manually uh looking at the data and trying to find out what uh what happened so it's here it's a little bit of a of an art rather than um uh solving issues with uh, coding um in terms of uh, what uh, can be done to improve, check the quality of the data, uh, of course, the one of the first thing to do is to count the number of, of episodes. So uh, within each diary or within each day, uh, to check that the total amount of time reported for uh, activities uh, is uh, adding up to uh, 1440, which uh, I don't need to remind you is the total number of minutes uh, we have each day. And indeed, uh, check that the beginning time of a given episode uh, is identical to the end time of the previous one. Uh, for each uh, series of episodes on a given day. Um, but as I've just said, uh, apart from this uh, very uh, mechanical uh, things to look at, uh, the rest of uh, the check, unfortunately, uh, needs to be done case by case. Now, uh, from my experience of time use researcher, it is not I mean, there are often uh, diaries which have issues, but there are not that many of them. So um, the vast majority of diaries in data set commonly available for secondary data analysis tend to be of uh, of uh, of uh, good quality. Okay, so are there any uh, questions before I switch to the demonstration? Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate uh, or to show a little bit some code uh, in relation to what I've just presented. Okay, so back to our studio and back to our uh, MTOS uh, sample. Okay, so uh, as I may or may not have uh, uh, hinted it, uh, producing robust estimates with uh, survey data in general and with uh, temporary data in particular is a whole topic in itself. And I don't have uh, the, 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 the time to cover this here. So my main recommendation is, and it would I would do the same if we were not talking about time survey is if you're using R and trying to uh, do inferential analysis, please refer to the survey package, uh, which is a survey, which is the package that has the most comprehensive set of uh, functions uh, for uh, robust uh, inference from uh, survey data. Uh, it will. I I won't have the time to uh, demonstrate here analysis with uh, using the survey uh, package, uh, but uh, I I think we we have enough information here to or, or you you have enough information from uh, from this course uh, if you have the conducted that type of analysis before as in inferential analysis with survey to apply it to. Uh, um the time diary uh, data or to aggregate time diary data uh, so please use the survey data if uh, the package if you if you can um uh, and if you can't then uh as i'm sure you're already aware there are a number of comment specific 
uh, ways of weighting estimates in in R, but they come with, uh, uh, of course, the usual uh, warnings about the validity of uh, your standard error and uh, uh, confidence interval estimates. Uh, so two common uh, such uh, var, uh, functions that, for example, WTD mean and WTD var from the HMISC uh, package. Okay, I would. Sh I just wanted to uh, maybe uh, show a little bit uh, with real data how the uh, diary weights work in practice. And uh, in order to do that, I will use DMTOS and then uh, uh, an example from another data set as well. So to start with, uh, with uh, the data set that uh, I shared with you, we can easily uh, look at the uh, distributions of days in the data. <clears throat> Obviously, uh, given that we know that uh, these were separate uh, studies we look at uh, we look at country or study that would give the same result uh, and uh, we uh, use the here the x tab cross tabs um, function uh, I'm using the cross tab function here rather than simply table uh, because it allows uh, using weights um, in a limited way. So the first cross tab here just shows that we don't uh, have a, a, a balanced distribution of days uh, except for the Netherlands, which uh, from the start managed to um, have an equal proportion of uh, people for each day. And it may be because uh, this is a sample in which, if I'm correct, uh, a seven diary, seven day sample, seven diary. So people were asked to fill in diary for the full week. And it may be that they just uh, retained in the data they shared uh, people who filled in uh, for the whole week and not those who uh failed to complete their diary every day and uh unsurprisingly uh don't forget also that it's the us coding so one and day one and day seven are respectively sunday and saturday and you won't be surprised to hear that most people or a larger proportion of people tend to feed their diary at the weekend rather than during the busy week. So with this information in mind, we need to uh, try and find a solution. So in uh, MTUS, the uh, variable that is used for waiting uh, diaries is called prop WT. So it's a uh, uh, it's it, it is not just a diary weight it's a weight weighting variable that has uh, the original weight of uh, sampling and non-response weight from the data but to which uh, a diary level uh, layer has been added so <clears throat> to see how it works we can just simply uh, reproduce our cross tab comment here or x taps comment here and the trick for weighting data with the x taps comment in r is just specifying the weighting variable on the left hand side of uh, the equation or the formula sorry uh, uh, between the brackets so this is what i've done here prop wt on the left hand side and the two variables country and day uh, on the right hand side. So I get the same table as before, but you can see that now all the uh, uh, days are, have an almost identical probability of uh, uh, almost even uh, distribution with tiny number of exceptions. And now all uh, 
in all uh, five, five surveys, uh, the proportion of each day is uh, similar to the one we only had for the Netherlands. Okay, so that's uh, the first stage. But of course, in an ideal world, we would also like to have something similar for months of the year. And of course, this is where uh, we have a limitation that is due to uh, data collection. So as uh, the, the next table shows, uh, this, there is only a limited uh, number of studies for which uh, data was collected uh, throughout uh, the year. So in practice, only the French, UK and uh, uh, US data was collected in uh, uh, in a full calendar year. The, the Dutch data was only collected in October of that year. And uh, the Spanish data was collected uh, every uh, every three months or so. Uh, as you can imagine, collecting uh, continuous uh, data across a year can be uh, an expensive uh, undertaking. Okay, so uh, in a year level or in a yearly time you study, you can uh, also uh, have weights that compensate, that equalize uh, the probability of uh, selection of uh, months within the survey. So here I'm demonstrating some coding that unfortunately you won't be able to reproduce because it entails using uh, data from the 2014-15 uh, time, uh, UK time diary data. To be fair, you will be able to reproduce it if you can, uh, if you have access to UK data service data, which may not, it's not necessarily uh, very difficult to uh, get if you're affiliated with a higher in education institution in the in the UK or even abroad. Okay, I'm just demonstrating here uh, what the weight is doing. So first, I am looking at uh, the unweighted so diary day act. So it's the way the day um, which the diary was collected. I'm just looking at before and after waiting. You can see that the result is similar to what we've seen before with PropWT in uh, uh, the MTOS. And uh, now I'm just also going to do the same with months of the year. And you can see that in the original data, uh some a few months were uh, overrepresented so um october and uh, november were overrepresented so um we applied a weight so dia wta and uh we can see that after we've done that we have um fairly balanced um distribution of months of the year. So with that types of weights applied, and of, of course, uh, given that we have, uh, uh, this is of course supported by uh, data that was indeed collected uh, throughout the year, then uh, we can inf make inference about um, uh, the time spent on activities for a given year for the population of uh, that country. Okay, uh, any questions? So it means that uh, whenever you are conducting uh, estimates of time diary data uh, with, uh, with a view to make uh, claims about population, you definitely need to add uh, these weighting variables uh, in, uh, in your comments. Prop WT in the case of MTUS. Okay, so uh, now I quickly go through uh, 
uh, the practical side of uh, episodes uh, we talked about, uh, episode quality. So just a reminder of here um, what uh, an episode, a series of uh, episodes look like uh, in a long data set format. So we have uh, country surveys of the year, household number, personal number, diary number. And then uh, we have here the episode number from one ranging from one to 19. Um, <clears throat> the duration of the episode in minutes, uh, start and end time and uh, the uh, the activity here coded alongside MTOS categories. So look, why do am I showing you this? Because this is the first way of looking uh, at whether something is wrong with um, some diaries. Um, for example, uh, one of the things we want to be the case is for the ending time here to be identical to the um, being time of the next episode uh, the, the next uh, episode so if there is something wrong uh, in your uh, data or if you have identified that there is something wrong with a given diary what, one of the things to look at is whether these match each other and uh, whether there's something you can do about it sometimes it's easy it can be that people have uh, uh, spend a, uh, a bit a bit of over optimistic and found themselves uh, with uh, not having enough time to uh, fill in to uh, correct their time diary so they may have the the right list of activities but they put too many uh, minutes for say the penultimate activity and then they found that when they want they filled in the or wrote the last line they didn't have enough time so they left it as it is, but it's something you can uh, correct by, impute by hand. Okay, so that's a way, uh, uh, just some uh, code here to uh, check uh, the number of uh, episodes uh, per person per day. So it follows the same logic as we've done before. We're just creating a variable here, uh, which we call maxep. Uh, which uh, tells us the maximum of this variable, epnum, which is simply the index or, or the, the episode count um, uh, for each diary. And if I ask for a table of this variable, you can see that there are indeed a few very problematic diaries, the, the, even a couple of diaries, more than a couple, 39 diaries uh, with just one episode. So clearly that's a problem. Um, and a few uh, uh, with a really, really large number of uh, episodes as well. Uh, there's another way of visualizing uh, the distribution of um, episodes in diaries. And it's uh, using again a histogram. You just uh, ask here for hist of uh, maxep, still one record per day. And that gives you an idea of uh, what it looks like. And you see, we're not very far from the 15 episodes per day that I was referring to earlier. Here it seems that it's maybe even a little bit more. So what if I want to identify uh, diaries that are problematic? So a quick and dirty way of doing this in R is uh, to ask for a table of um, episodes uh, for which maxep is uh, smaller than seven. That's the, the kind of imbricated uh, comments we can easily do in R. So, uh, and I've added prop table here to, to get a proportion. So you can see that fortunately, 
uh, it's a tiny proportion, so uh, 0.005% of um, uh, the sample or, or, or rather of episodes uh, have uh, a bad quality, so that's good. And uh, more than 80% looking at the other side of things, episode with uh, 15 Oh, diary, sorry, with uh, 15 episodes or more, uh, there are 83% uh, of them, which uh, sounds uh, reassuring. And we can also look at uh, diary quality uh, per country, and I am not uh, trying to show off here with the UK, but it is true that the UK sample has the... Uh, according to that definition, the, the best uh, quality uh, as opposed to uh, the US and French um, data. Okay, so uh, that's it for uh, the uh, data quality uh, topic I wanted to talk about. I think that... Um, of course, as you you will do your own research, you will learn your uh, your own syntax, your own way of uh, uh, going through these issues. But I think here I've tried to identify maybe the the, the main uh, things to think about uh, when working with um, time diary um, data. Okay, so now that we have covered the, the boring stuff, it's not boring, but uh, <laughs> uh, with uh, 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 estimation, I would like to uh, go back to um, the... Um, analysis of data and uh, more specifically i wanted to talk about tempograms yes uh, as i said sorry for this mishap uh, i am going to uh, full screen okay so tempograms okay so as we have seen uh, there are different ways of um, describing activities and episodes. So the simplest ways are simply by computing point estimates of duration or probabilities of activities, duration of activities or probability of engaging in activities. <clears throat> uh, but after a while, we may want to look at things that are a little bit more uh, complex or that give a little bit more information than just uh, means and probabilities, however interesting they uh, they may be. So uh, this is why, while still being um, descriptive analysis, uh, the idea that one could map uh, the activities of a given population uh, throughout a typical day uh, is uh, becoming of interest. So the, the, the principle really of uh, uh, tempograms or, or of such a mapping is simply to ask yourself, what is the proportion of people uh, or, or rather of uh, diaries uh, by activity, uh, by time of the day? So what what is what are people reporting in their diaries uh, at ten o'clock on a typical day? Um, and also uh, that allows to look at uh, how things tend to be sequenced or ordered throughout the days. And this is what we are trying to do uh, in a visual way with tempograms. So this. Plot here uh, is uh, maybe a, 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 a shorthand way of uh, trying to answer a question: What are men uh, doing on the typical week weekday, or what were men 
on a, doing on a typical weekday in the UK in 2014 and 15. And you can see that. So we, we have uh, already seen uh, such a plot before. So we have uh, as x-axis the time of the day, starting from 4 a.m. until 3.59 uh, a.m. the next day. Uh, we have uh, on the y-axis uh, the proportion of people. And then uh, we have all these activities here, proportion of people for each one of these eight activities. Uh, in pink, uh, we have sleep and, and self-care. In uh, brownish here, uh, I... Apologize, by the way, if my the description of colors is not really accurate because I am colorblind, <laughs> uh, but I hope this remains uh, understandable. So we have the paid work here, uh, and uh, in uh, violet here we have a uh, leisure activity with other activities such as uh, reproductive work here or caring in darker, darker green. So if we look at this, what can we say? We can say that, well, uh, men tend to sleep, uh, understandably and surprisingly, until, for the vast majority of them, until 6 a.m. And uh, again, start to sleep, lots of them, most of them start to sleep from uh, after, uh, 11 p.m. or midnight onwards, um, with a slight proportion of people who have or sleep or self-care, actually. So it's not just sleeping. I should not get carried away with sleep. Um, and uh, more time, a little bit more people also spend time uh, doing self-care, having breaks, for example, around uh lunchtime and surprisingly or indeed after the working day uh from um 4 4 30 onwards and then the big uh uh drop in paid work uh really occurs uh from 7 8 uh pm onwards um, so it's of course interesting to see the, the amount of time uh, paid work uh, takes for people uh, during, for especially for men uh, during the day. So the the big chunk of paid work occurs uh, here in, in the morning and uh, until eighteen, unsurprisingly. And uh, when uh, they are not doing uh, paid work. Uh, men tend to uh, be engaged in reproductive work or shopping. Reproductive work is uh, basically looking after uh, the household, uh, what is usually called household chores. And you won't be surprised to hear also that leisure on weekdays tend to uh, take place um, towards the end of the afternoon and... Um, um in the evening of course uh it's it can be interesting to look at uh more uh complex ways of um dividing one's day and you with the data that we have you can produce your own uh recording uh, to suit your uh, research interest, but that's just uh, I was just showing this as a, as a way of uh, uh, showing the logic of uh, a time program. So um, there are different ways of uh, computing time programs. I will uh, because I find it more intuitively uh straightforward uh i will demonstrate computing uh, time programs for time slot data so a time slot data is a variable in which you have or a data set in which you have uh, variables uh for each one of these 
time slot. So uh, you would have, uh, given that we have uh, 144 time slots, uh, in a 10 minute time slots in a day. So what we in fact plot is the proportion of uh, people by activity uh, for one of these one uh, 144 uh, time slots. So uh, in you won't be surprised to hear that uh, the way to create a time program bears similarities with what we have done before. So first of all, we again uh, decide on the definition of activities we're interested in, and then we record uh, the, the episodes in uh, these categories we're interested in. And then we compute uh, the proportion of uh, uh, respondents uh, with a diary uh, in each group of activity. And then we plot it using area plot. Fortunately, in R, we have this advanced uh, plotting function uh, in the ggplot2 package that makes our life easier. And uh, we can then uh, do it by, uh, for example, uh, gender and day of the week. So, and that's what you would look at. So on the left-hand side here, uh, we have the plot I've showed earlier. So these are uh, men um, on weekdays. Now we can compare uh, weekdays and weekends. And we can see, of course, the immediately the difference by the larger area that is occupied by leisure, leisure activities throughout the day. Clearly, that's one of the main story uh, when you look at uh, a week versus weekend for men. There's clearly more leisure and clearly more reproductive work and still some but much less paid work here and of course uh, we can see uh, that the difference uh, between genders are also really marked so less the area for paid work is always larger for men than for women even uh, on weekdays, and that reflects the fact that women do more reproductive work and are less uh, engaged, uh, tend to work part-time since we're in the UK. Uh, and the fact that women do more reproductive work and uh, less paid work suggests at the same time that the total amount of work they do uh, is no smaller and maybe even larger since there's more caring as well than men. So as a result, they have less, or at least not more, uh, leisure time, or at least they, are, they, are, as they don't have a larger uh, or higher probability than men of engaging in um, uh, leisure activities. And that remains true uh, at this, the weekend. And com it's interesting to compare here uh, the amount of time uh, or, or the, the, the area, sorry, uh, representing um, the probability for women to engage in. Uh, oops, what have I done? Uh, to engage in um, so I think I have jumped the slide yes uh, so the probability of uh, engaging in uh, reproductive work here okay so yes I'm going to share the code that's uh, the point of uh, I just wanted to demonstrate the type of contrast we can uh, look at here okay so 
what we are going to do now is to uh, compute something similar, but looking at um, differences between countries. So uh, I am going back to our studio. Uh, or rather, I am going back to my workbook. Okay, so uh, here I am asking those of you who are a little bit less familiar with uh, R to uh, bear in mind that you will, if you feel a little bit lost, you will have the opportunity, of course, to reproduce that and experiment with this uh, by yourself after the, the session. But, so in order to produce code that I felt would be interesting, I, I, I had to use a syntax that may be a little bit more complex than uh, what we have done uh, so far. Okay, so <clears throat> in order to uh, compute uh, the uh, data uh, necessary for having time slot uh, a time program, we need to convert at some point our episode data into a time slot uh, data set. And if we want to do that, we will need to use a special function, which uh, and count from the tidy R package, which uh, duplicates rows uh, according to uh, a variable. So in a sense, we are going to uh, ask uh, R later on in the code to duplicate the number of rows from given episodes according to the duration of these episodes. <coughs> So the first thing I do here is to check the quality of my data. Why am I doing that? Because the first time I try to simply uh, create tempograms with the five countries, I realized that some data looked really twisted. Uh, and I had to really uh, look uh, well into the data to find what was wrong. And it appeared that some uh, country data had issues. So uh, I'm just computing. Uh, first uh, and and I know from the start also that we can't uh, uh, for technical reason uh, plot the Dutch and the US data uh, in the, uh, with the same syntax uh, because the sample design is too uh, different. Um, however, so we are still we are left with the UK, France and Spain and uh, I am going to look at uh, these uh, activities uh, similar to those I've showed you uh, for weekdays. So the first thing I do is I'm checking the number of episodes, um, so the, the maximum number of episodes, the total amount of time, uh, and whether uh, it all ends at uh, 15, 14 and 14 minutes per day. That's the first thing I do. And in order to make sure that I'm not uh, damaging or altering my initial data set, I'm uh, also uh, creating a new uh, data set with the episode data. Uh, that's something that can be easily done. Now. And uh, the other thing I do, um, I I am adding from the uh, day level data because I don't think that the episode uh, five had it, the waiting uh, variable, prop WT, because I want my um, tempogram to be computed with weighted um, values. Okay, so I have this FM uh, data set now that has uh, these quality check variables I created that has the prop wt variable and I just check on the data quality. So I can see that the minep, there's an issue with the minep variable so uh, not all uh, diaries start with episode number one um, I could spend and I would probably for real world research advise you to look in depth into what D 
this so, but for the purpose of this exercise, I'm just uh, I will just decide to uh, delete them, especially given that they are really a small proportion, a little bit less small in the UK, but still uh, less than uh, one percent for the two other countries. Then we have there's the issues, and that particularly matters for temporograms of uh, activities that do not add up to uh, one or two to 14 and 40 minutes per day. So we need to uh, see to that. And again, I would advise you to look at uh, what's going on with the data, uh, uh, if possible, even if it takes a significant amount of time. But here, again, for the purpose of this exercise, I, I'm, I will just uh, get rid of them. Um, but it's important to keep in mind that the uh, proportion of such uh, diaries is not small. It's between uh, 37 in France uh, and 16% uh, of uh, the diaries in the UK. Okay, so we have done, uh, we have checked that. So uh, as we we can go to the next stage. So um, since we, so we are uh, creating, going to create the slot date set. Um, the last thing we need to create uh, before we go is uh, this count variable, which is basically um, the, uh, the time uh, variable that is divided by 10 because uh, we just uh, yes, we don't need um, this, uh, we just need the number of uh, of slots not uh, the number of minutes so I'm creating the slot that set from the episode one uh, I'm dropping off the bad quality uh, diary as I have uh define them earlier and this is where i am using the end count functions which is going to create rows for the uh, duplicate uh, the rows uh for the um, uh for each episode of course uh, in the hypothesis of having episodes that last one minute oh sorry 10 minutes so uh one unit in terms of the diary resolution uh, these search lines won't be duplicated only lines that are longer uh, episodes that are longer than 10 minutes will be duplicated so i have this episode file this slot file that i can start uh, looking at um, so it's uh, you, if you want to have a, a nice, uh, neat uh, display, you will need to convert uh, this uh, some of the data into a date frame so that uh, all the uh, Haven attributes do not show up. But uh, uh, I'm asking you to trust me <laughs> that uh, the data is as it, should, as it should. And now, obviously, what has changed is that as any time slot data set, you have 144 lines for each, uh, every and single diary in the data set. So basically your data set now has become uh, much bigger, which is also a reason why time slot data sets are not used so commonly. A quick quality check are indeed all the Diary is made of uh, 144 records. Yes, they are, which is cool. And that is indeed the case for all countries. Okay, so we have uh, hopefully uh, data that is uh, good enough. And we can start working on the uh, tempo gram. Okay, so um, here's how I did it. So first of all, I created a label that was going to uh, simply contain the description of um, activities people 
were engaged in. So similar to those in the plots I've shown earlier. So sleep and self-care, work and schooling, uh, reproductive work, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, next stage, I am uh, simply uh, recording this uh, in uh, in the in the data, so that I have the proper uh, categories that match. So you could uh, you could do it by hand, as in instead of having a predefined la label, simply. Uh, specify the, the character strings here, but uh, it would be a little bit messier. I can then uh, define uh, this variable as uh, a factor, and I reorder the uh, um, categories or the levels of the factor so that uh, uh, they uh, follow the order from the plot earlier. Uh, why do I use factor? Because it's easier to define an arbitrary order. Otherwise, by default, they always ended up end up being uh, sorted alphabetically, alphabetically by by R. Okay, and now for the bulk of uh, the computation. So, as I said, I chose to go for something that's probably a little bit uh, more complex than. Uh, a simple tempogram here so that we can have uh, interesting results. Okay, so what I've done is I have used the loop so that I could, in a, in a single operation, so to speak, in a single loop, compute uh, the tempograms for uh, each of the three countries in, in the sample. So in this sense, what I am doing is the following. Uh, I am creating a list, which is this uh, special and very handy type of object that you have in R, which can store all sorts of things, including uh, data frames. Uh, and this uh, list that I call TMPR is going to uh, be used to store the three sets of data that we are going to uh, create the tempograms for. <clears throat> so the first level of the loop is uh, between countries, simply uh, defined by their the values of, of their variables, of the, the country variable. Um, and then uh, I am within, within the list, I'm creating a matrix, which is where uh, these uh, tempogram data uh, will be stored. And now uh, I am iterating uh, between uh, all the lines of uh, the diaries. So I am asking for each of the lines uh, ranging from 1 to 144 for each time diary. Uh, to indeed compute uh, the proportion of people uh, who report it uh, uh, activity, given activities in their time diary. So the engine, the really the core of this computation here is simply something we've done before. So it's a, it's a cross tab. I'm just uh, asking for a, a cross tab of um, sorry, I'm, it's not a cross tab. I'm using the cross tab function because it allows uh, for easy weighting, but just a, a frequency table of the variable I've created here, the main uh, S, the eight category activity, um, weighted by prop WT, uh, converted into proportion by prop table, and then round it so that um, it's uh, more human uh, readable. And I'm computing this for each uh, line, line by line of this time slot diary uh, for each country. So it's actually quite, as you may um, 
imagine it's com uh, computationally intensive. So it, depending on how powerful your computer is, it may take a little while. Uh, there, I'm pretty sure there, there are other ways of doing this. And uh, if you have suggestions for uh, more efficient coding, I am more than happy to take them into account. But I, I find this shows well what is actually going on uh, under the hood when you're doing it that way. Okay. Uh, and then, uh, yes, once this has been computed, I'm uh, making sure that the right name has allocated to the right summary uh, values here. And then uh, numbering post hoc uh, each one of the 144 estimates for each uh, set of results. So that's the first part. This is the part where we compute the uh, sets of uh, proportions of uh, activities engaged in per time slot uh, per country. Now we need to go to the next stage, which is uh, about coding this, uh, sorry, plotting this. And you will notice that uh, I was not strictly uh, obliged, as I've done it here, to have one uh, country, uh, one loop between countries uh, for computing and one loop between countries for plotting. I could have kept on going uh, uh, with plotting uh, within the same loop within country, but uh, I, I didn't want to make things too complicated. Okay, so um, if we want to uh, use ggplot, uh, we are going to need to convert our uh, data, which is uh, in the which in the meantime has become a wide format data because we have lines of uh, 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 proportion for the variable of interest, we, we are need, going to convert into long format uh, in the sense of ggplot uh, using the reshape uh, to library or more precisely the melt function from the reshape uh, to library or package. And this way we will have data that is immediately uh, usable by ggplot. So, how do I do this? Um, so, I'm just creating a new object, but this is a temporary object here. It's going to be uh, deleted um, each time um, or, or written off, uh, written on each time uh, on another step of the loop is uh, taking place. <clears throat> so which stores uh, uh, this converted to long format uh, matrix, matrix using time as ID variable. I'm renaming uh, for easier handling later on uh, the second variable, just so that we know it's the activity. And that's the trickier bit here. So this line here is about uh, making sure that uh, the plot represents the proper time of the day. So we know that uh, days in time diary starts at 4 a.m. Um, so which means that in terms of uh, the, the units in which time is expressed in the way we've computed them, it's standard time 230. Uh, and then, of course, it uh, goes on uh, afterwards. Um, the other thing is, uh, yes, and you need to, con so in, in, you need to convert um, time that go beyond that uh, to uh, accordingly. Uh, this here is uh, probably the scariest looking line of all of this, but it's actually simply uh, 
converting the uh, time expressed in minutes into uh, time in uh, hour and minutes uh, so that we have more intelligible uh, an more intelligible x-axis for people who are familiar with time diaries and finally i'm just making sure that uh, uh, the factor levels are the proper one for the activity so in, or in other words the proportion of the main s variable we created earlier uh, and then reflect the label used before. Okay, so that's for uh, the first stage of the plotting. So we have prepared the data for plotting in, and uh, we have prepared it in uh, a tmp.g object. Now for the proper plotting. So um, I am creating this plot by using uh, the ggplot function. You may or may not be familiar with ggplot. It has to be thought of as a series of um, layers that you add successively to uh, an object, uh, a plot object, um, and that increasingly gives it in the shape you want it to have. So the first stage really consists in specifying the data and then uh, the basic characteristic or what's in ggplot jargon, the aesthetic of the plot. So uh, I am specifying here uh, that the x will be what is has been created as the time variable, uh, which is, in other words, my time uh, slots. And why uh, the value, which is the default name for the variable that was created by the melt function here. I could have spent time changing the name, but I haven't. Um, and then, uh, so these are the, uh, the first stage. Second stage, this is where I'm telling ggplot that on top of this, I would like to have uh, an area plot. So I add geom area and I need to uh, clarify the aesthetic. So uh, saying that the categories of the activity variable uh, will be uh, the base for coloring the areas. Um, <clears throat> stack meaning of course that uh, they need to be um, put on top of each other. <clears throat> and uh, the rest is uh, a series of uh, options that uh, make the graph clearer. Strictly speaking, they are not indispensable for uh, the um, uh, for the, 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 the plot to be uh, correct, but obviously they make it much easier to read, such as clarifying the x and y axis uh clarifying the uh, title as well as uh, font um, and uh, panel background characteristics okay uh, you will notice here for the record that if you want instead of having these plots to show up e uh, immediately, you can have them um, saved using the gg save command as a PNG plot, for example. Okay, so I'm repeating this before uh, looking at the, the results. So <clears throat> what have we done? We have first uh, recorded, created a slot, uh, time slot data set, in which we have uh, recorded the activity variable into a number of categories of interest. We then have computed for each one of these uh, slots, the proportion of uh, time diaries in which uh, these were, uh, which were falling in each one of the categories. And we end up therefore with a summary variable for each time slot with proportion for each diary in each activity. And I have done that by uh, looping uh, between diaries, lines of diaries, and countries. Second stage, I am 
uh, now plotting these again looping across countries and i'm plotting these by a converting these uh, results uh, that i had stored in the in a list uh, into a long uh, um, data set um, I'm just cl uh, cleaning up the units here, especially the time units, so that they match uh, what actually is uh, measured in the data. Start at 4 a.m., uh, measured in uh, time, in hour and minutes, as opposed to just minutes. And then I plot for each country. Uh, these data that I've just melted or, or in long format by specifying time uh, as x-axis and the proportion of uh, there is an activity in as the y-axis and having uh, colors to uh, separating the different categories. And this is the result. <clears throat> So uh, we have three plots here, as one could expect. And you will notice that the plot here uh, is very similar to the one I showed during my presentation. And unsurprisingly so, because this is the, the, the uh, data, the time program for uh, men and women, uh, before it was just men, uh, on weekdays in the UK. So that's the UK data. And now we can compare the UK data with uh, French and Spanish data. And it's actually quite interesting. Um, so for example, if I'm just going to compare French and uh, Spanish data, uh, there is quite a number of differences. So uh would any one of you would be would any one of you be prepared to uh make uh to comment on these differences what do big you lunch breaks for the french <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. big lunch break lunch break for the french uh and uh not only it is big but uh actually yeah it's interesting what do you mean by big uh, well, they stop working with with the UK. It's kind of a, a small. I don't know. It seems like the the time that they are are breaking from from work in the UK is. So um, what, yeah, what is actually, I'm not sure now. That's correct. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Sure. That's that's interesting. <laughs> so what it shows is that uh, more there are more reports of lunch break in French than in uh, in the UK, definitely. But when you look at uh, the, the width, the temporal width, um, we, we don't measure duration. So it's we can't really make inference about duration, but uh, it's roughly happening during the... Uh, it's not that a case that the French are doing having not break at, at any point in time. It's just that they seem to have much more of them or many more of them seems to have their lunch break uh, at the same time. Uh, dinner break, so that's from Tadaf. Yes, there's a dinner break. So uh, I suppose there are two ways of looking at it, and maybe I can also scroll up to the Spanish data, which is kind of uh, not as radical as the French one, but uh, still closer maybe to that and uh, which may, here what the, the story may have is also the the fact that there's a and this is it's not my field but it's something i've uh, heard reported in research the fact that there's a, a, a gradual disappearance of traditional meal in the uk by comparison with uh, continental europe and in that way the uk uh, would tend to follow a little bit more the the lead so to speak of, of the us Yes, so that's clearly uh, uh, one of the uh, interesting difference between uh, between the two countries. Another one, of course, uh, is uh, uh, maybe uh, the time at which uh, people uh, or how people organize their leisure. There seems to be a little bit also. Uh, 
it, maybe it's a consequence of sharing meals, but uh, there is some reproductive work here more intensively uh, going on in the French uh, than uh, in the British data set here. Leisure time is organized different ways. Anyway, but of course, there would be, it would be really interesting also to, I didn't uh, do it here in order not to over complicate things, but uh, if you look at gender differences between these countries, I'm pretty sure that there would be interesting research as well. Um, and uh, uh, there, there's always a balance, I guess, uh, to be to draw between the 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 more specific the group you're looking at, the more interesting potentially the results. But of course, there's a limitation, which is the the more specific the group you look at, the less or the fewer observations you have and the more imprecise uh, your estimates are. So it's uh, it's a little bit of a balancing exercise that uh, you have to um, uh, determine for yourself depending on what your uh, research interest in. Okay, so that's uh, uh, maybe a way of uh, mapping uh, people's activities uh, during the day. So I'm going to uh, maybe uh, ask if there are any questions um, or comments apart from how the French have their meals. <laughs> I need to clarify, I'm not French. Any comments or question? Yes, I am fully aware that it's not easy codes. The only thing I can tell you, if you try to do it again and again, you're going to see it's going to get easier. Um, yeah. Uh, maybe I wanted to seize on the opportunity um, before um, I move maybe to the last, uh, to the last slides. Um, so do, are any of you engaged in uh, or have interest for time diary research? What is your research interest, actually? Uh, have you already worked with time diary research? Are you planning to? What, on what kind of topic? A couple of things quickly. Uh, just in passing, because I really... Uh, do I probably need to share my screen again, actually? Uh, I had forgotten, so back to sharing. Okay, and viewing. Okay, so I'm just saying a few words about this. You can uh, go through the slides by yourself. So just to mention that uh, for those of you who are interested in the, the area of paid work, um, it's uh, some uh, time use surveys, including the UK ones, have been uh, collecting data about what they uh, called the work schedule. And work schedule is a separate, uh, rather rudimentary um, time uh, diary in which people were only asked to report um, uh, whether or not they were doing paid work. But the, uh, the, the specific feature is that it's not anymore just two days uh, per week, but it's a full seven uh, day week. So it's kind of a compromise between uh, uh, trying to minimize respondent fatigue uh, by only asking them for a full diary for two days, but still collecting some data about uh, their work life um, uh, structure for seven days. And of course, if you're interested in paid work, then that's a really uh, great instrument because that really provides you uh, with a photo, a full photograph of someone's uh, work week, uh, much in a much better, uh, in a much more precise and, and better way than if you were to, uh, as one does traditionally, ask questions about how, uh, what's the duration of your week, uh, how uh, do you sometimes work out of hours, etc., etc. Here we are, we have an instrument that, in theory, offers people the possibility to 
uh, or in researcher to to study a, a real work week. Um, so that's how it was recorded. So sorry, the image quality is not great, but that just show you. Um, but gives you an idea. So people were so in order to minimize respondent fatigues, people were just asked to uh, draw a line, uh, and each row represent a day. And this was then as uh, coded uh, um, separately. So <laughs> this is uh, the a very basic way of uh, plotting such uh, time uh, schedule data, work schedule data. Obviously, it would become more interesting once you start looking at uh, gender or other type of uh, of difference. But uh, yes, that's uh, that's a really great and potentially interesting instrument to uh, to look at. Um, okay. But the the main two things I uh, wanted to mention here uh, are basically the, the next step of time diary analysis. So I just mentioned two things, and uh, uh, yes, for for your record, if you have uh, any specific question you want to ask me, uh, don't hesitate to send me an email. Uh, I, I can provide more specific answer. Okay, so. Uh, of course, what we have done so far is or still falls under the label of uh, descriptive analysis. So we have uh, simply uh, described uh, characteristics of our sample and made some timid attempt at inferring, inferring some uh, univariate or bivariate characteristics of our sample. But uh, a lot of us uh, social science researcher want to go a little bit beyond and uh, do some uh, multivariate analysis. <clears throat> so I, I wanted to just uh, make a few comments about uh, what applies uh, and what are the things to look out for when doing multivariate analysis with time diary data. So the, as you may probably already be aware, uh, the main two outcome variables uh, you or the easiest way of thinking about outcome variables from a time uh, use perspective are either the durations uh, that we have computed before, have a daily duration of a given activity as outcome variable, uh, or uh, having the probability of engaging in an activity on a given day as the outcome variable. And if you're familiar with the regression or the GLM framework, you can see how this can translate uh, with uh, 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 indeed a linear model in the case of duration uh, or uh, logit or um, probit model in the case of uh, probability of engaging in activities. However, I would encourage you to keep a number of things in mind, such as uh, that the, the activities, uh, the duration of activity may have a very different shape depending on the activity. So you can't, it's really good to check uh, that uh, the activity you are planning on modeling uh, actually uh, can be assimilated to the normal distribution. And if it isn't, uh, maybe other types of regression or techniques may be uh, uh, better, such as Poisson regression, for example. Um, an issue you will have to deal with, which is partly related, is what you do with the zeros. Uh, so if you're modeling sleep or uh, time spent eating, you are going to, uh, most people will, on most days, will report engaging in these activities. However, if you are uh, starting to in, uh, look at activities um, that are a little bit less common, and that can start with paid work, uh, you are, going to find your data uh, with uh, that your data consists with a non-negligible number of 
zero. So that has a substantive and uh, methods uh, impact, impact. So the, the substantive is uh, what are you actually interested in? How do you uh, take into account this non-participant non into your uh, theoretical framework? But from a technical point of view, of course, uh, having a bimodal distribution with lots of zeros uh, at one end, or, or lots of people having answered zeros or zero observation at one end will affect your, your regression model. Um, so there are different ways of dealing with that, uh, and I'm not going to go through them. Uh, if there are economists among you, selection models is one of them. So in which you model separately uh, or as part of the same model, the probability of participation with the amount of uh, participation. Uh, but you can also, you could also decide to only look uh, at participants. Uh, clustering of observation. So as we have seen, the unit, the basic unit of observation of time diary data is diaries, time diaries. Uh, so depending on what you're looking at, uh, and depending on the survey design, you may or may not have lots of uh, uh, observation diaries within people. Uh, if you're looking at sleep, for example, or eating, again, activities that are carried out on most days, uh, you will end up, in the case of UK data, with uh, most of the time to uh, observation per person, which means that uh, your uh, standard error are going to be clustered within people. So uh, what to do with that? Again, different ways of doing it, this. Um, I... And I suppose the, it's always best probably to start with the simplest way and then to explore if it suits your purpose. So the simplest way uh, in the example I've shown would be to look at whether simply computing models with robust standard errors is not sufficient. Uh, Another way of uh, looking at it is the actual amount of observations for which you have two diaries per person. Uh, looking at paid work again, even if in theory you have two days of diaries per person, uh, most people do not simult simultaneously work on weekdays and at the weekend. Some do, but uh, their number may be negligible with regard to the whole uh, sample size, so it may be ignorable. Um, Yes, so it's uh, just something to investigate and to keep in the back of your mind that potentially there's a, there's an issue there with clustering of observation. Of course, if we're working with seven-day diaries, then that uh, is becoming even more uh, important. So how to do fit, how to fit linear uh, or a regression model in R. I am um, assuming that you have come across the LM or GLM uh, functions from the stats package already, uh, which, uh, uh, and, and there's a way of uh, computing sandwich estimator for standard error. And sorry for the typo here. Uh, uh, when uh, doing modeling. So that's uh, maybe a first uh, broad uh, overview of the uh, multivariate analysis landscape here. So it's very easy uh, to compute um, model linear uh, model of uh, some of the variables we have computed here. So for example, uh, computing a GLM, GLM model or LM model of uh, the uh, total amount of time spent working uh, on a day uh, as a independent variable, as a dependent variable, and uh, gender, for example, as a uh, uh, independent variable. Okay, so that's uh, a quick word about uh, regression. Uh, now, 
uh, another uh, kind of research avenue um, that has been pursued by some researcher uh, has been to try and create typologies. It's something sociologists like to do, creating typologies of behavior. Um, so, uh, and, and the, one of the common tools for creating typologies um, is uh, or relies on um, a, s a combination of sequence and cluster analysis. <clears throat> so, and maybe um, the work schedule uh, that I have demonstrated earlier, show, show earlier, provide an example for that. So, uh, if you uh, defined a sequence of activities, um, and you uh, decide to group them into clusters uh, using uh, cluster analysis, uh, and say that the sequence you're interested in are sequences of paid versus mm, paid work versus anything else, or paid work versus leisure versus um, reproductive work, then you end up with a potential uh, a potential uh, series uh, of sequences that you can group into clusters. And these clusters uh, then can become uh, uh, outcome variables for further analysis. So there's a, a, a an old but still interesting paper by Leonard and Ken uh, in which they did that with atypical work in 2011. I think there's been an update to their paper recently. Uh, and there's an R package that's called Traminer that uh, is doing precisely that. Okay, so I realize that we are running out of time and we could keep on to look, uh, talking for a long time. So uh, please, uh, so first of all, are there any questions uh, before uh, I uh, we, we conclude for today? Uh, I will stay a couple more minutes, but if you have to go or if you don't have any questions, please feel, uh, please help us. Uh, designing for a future event by filling in the uh, evaluation form uh, that I think Emma has shared in the chat um, before leaving. And anyway, uh, thank you for taking part to this workshop. I really enjoyed uh, interacting with you on this, and I hope this will uh, serve you with the rest of your uh, research. Feel free to be in touch if you have specific questions that I haven't covered into the workshop. But I, I will stay a couple more minutes now. If you have, for those of you who have the time, uh, if you want to uh, ask uh, any extra questions or make uh, extra comments.